Yesterday, in Channel 4's alternative Christmas message, national treasure Stephen Fry outed himself as a Jew. And worse than that, he dared call out the dramatic increase these last few months in anti Semitism, <coughs> which has sent the far left into a meltdown. He was still trending earlier on today, and X, and here's just a sample from my scrolling. It's propaganda. He's in hock to the Israel lobby. It's a red flag. He's torched his reputation. He's selfish to his bones. He's chasing a knighthood. I'll never watch him again. He's a Zionist. Like Zionism's a dirty word as opposed to just thinking that the state of Israel has the right to exist. There are also conspiracies about, uh, you know, is Stephen Fry being financed by somebody? Who's he in the pocket of? And there are many, many far left people who just suddenly, for some mysterious reason, simply thought that even though they liked him before, Stephen Fry was now a C word. A C word merely for pointing out that since October 7th, there have been 50 separate anti Semitic incidents a day here in my hometown of London, an increase of 1,350%, which includes vandalism and assaults and even Jewish schools being closed. The most recent and saddest incident I saw was this graffiti uh, on Christmas Eve, and it says, They're evil, Jew, ban, Jew. Now, that is uh, Notting Hill. That's uh, it's Meanwhile Garden Skate Park. I grew up just around the corner. I even skated there a few times when I was a teenager, and I was very, very bad. Uh, but I have fond memories, uh, apart from a sore coccyx, of being encouraged and made feel welcome. It was an inclusive place where the only factor that really mattered was meritocracy. Uh, I guess not anymore. But wait, what about the far right? Stephen's attackers cry, you know, even though he specifically calls them out in his message. I too have had far right anti Semites attack me. It wasn't pleasant, and I'm not naive to their hatred. But what about Gaza? They cry, even though Fry specifically mentions the war, even though he's long been an outspoken uh, critic of Israel, sometimes justifiably, although in this instance, to my mind, he partly calls out Israel for the tragic loss of Gazan civilian life, when instead I'd put all the blame firmly on Hamas's shoulders. But what about Islamophobia? Even though, well, anyway, you get the point. For the far left, if bigotry, hypocrisy, or just outright stupidity doesn't work, then water battery is their favorite weapon. And if that doesn't work, if their arguments fail because of their incoherence and inconsistencies, then of course they resorted to trying to smear him, just as they did when Rachel Riley spoke out, or Tracy Ann Oberman spoke out, or David Bedil spoke out. But maybe this time it's different. Maybe Stephen Fry is just too much part of our cultural fabric for people to not see how mental and racist the response from the far left has been. I'm sure Fry knew what he was doing, that the far left would let the veil drop, that their mask would finally, fully come off if he dared turn himself into their target. Well, he dared. And by doing so, they so eloquently have proved his point. What a C word. But to respond now, I'm joined again by journalist and broadcaster Linda Duberley, journalist and broadcaster Benjamin Butterworth, and journalist and agony aunt Hillary Freeman. So have you guys seen the stuff there, Hillary? Have you seen the stuff on Twitter that has just gone yeah. mental or X now? Yeah, I mean, it just proves the point, doesn't it? I mean, it is not about Israel. It's not about... It is about anti-Semitism. People are anti-Semitic. And, you know, by... by when, when somebody like Stephen Fry, who is, you know, we want to call him a national treasure, comes out and says he's Jewish, people go crazy. And what's that about? Well, but when you say people go crazy, it's not people. I think most people don't care or they're mm. interested. It's, care. it's the far, for me, people the, the whole point is the far left. Generally, it's the far left, yes. Um, I mean, y you can't always tell on Twitter. I, I, you can't always tell anymore, quite frankly, because the far left and the far right on, on this issue are pretty much morphed together. I think the only difference with Stephen Fry is that the, probably the, the far right didn't like him before because he's gay, whereas now the far left have got a reason to not like him. You know, I, I think that's that's really the only difference. Um, and, and, you know, it, he... People have, you know, he has, as you said, called out Israel in the past. And yet now he's come out and said, I'm Jewish. And suddenly he's a terrible person. So what is this about? And it's, it's clear that, you know, what is going on in this country has got nothing to do with, you know, people saying, oh, it's, we're not allowed to criticise the Israeli government. Well, yes, you are. Of course you are. But why does that mean anti-Semitism has gone up? 
You know, it's, it's, and also, yeah. like that, it doesn't mean that you can't then call it anti Semitism and go, wait a minute, that's a bad thing. Exactly. That is a staggering figure, 1,350%. Yeah. That's a staggering figure. But where does that figure come from? It comes from the Met. Right. So, uh, actually, yeah. probably fairly accurate. Actually, they're, they're quite good at their data collection. So and, and, probably, that's and probably on the low side, because I've experienced a few things I haven't reported. So if other people haven't, haven't reported things because they think, well, it's, it's not that serious. Yeah. I mean, they? this is like you know, vandalism, yeah. people yeah. being uh, attacked verbally in the street, but also yeah. physically as well. Yeah. I think it's not just about anti-Semitism as well. I think it's about this general... I mean, we started with this subject actually at the beginning of this programme, but it's about this general polarisation and anger that yeah. keeps coming out. It seems as though people want to get angry. They want a subject and they want to be angry about it. One yeah. way or the and, other. And it's also about the lack of understanding because most yeah. of the people who are criticising do not know anything about the history of Israel. They don't know anything about Zionism. And they think that because they have this idea of themselves as virtuous people That's right. and they can see people dying, exactly right. therefore Zionism must be terrible, Israel shouldn't exist, and Jews are bad people. Do you yeah. think, Benjamin, that they've exposed themselves? I mean, look, the reason I post Stephen Fry is that jumper. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. That's what you mean. <laughs> And his sexuality, of course. Uh, yeah, of course, I can't stand gay people. Um, look, the reason that the, the reason people oppose Stephen Fry's Christmas message is exactly why he needs to do yes. a Christmas message mm. talking about anti-Semitism. You know, the fact that people who have beloved Stephen Fry for decades, as millions of Britons have, mm. and around the world, and then he suddenly gets all this abuse because he comes out to acknowledge that he is Jewish, really tells you the story. And the fact is that I think there's been a mainstreaming of anti-Semitism in recent years. You know, it's the oldest racism. And to any rational person, it's so mm. hard to comprehend, mm. you know, like, like any racism is. But it's, it's managed to creep its way in as an acceptable form of racism. It's able to dress itself up as being against the rich and powerful, which, of course, is an anti-Semitic trope. Yes. But then it becomes into the language that left-wing people usually use. And, of course, it's worth noting Stephen Fry is a lifelong Labour voter. He's done Labour Party political broadcasts yeah. in the past. This is not a man who's right-wing. This is not a man who is ever going to endorse Netanyahu's approach to governing. Uh, and yet you have people associate supporting the Israeli government somehow with your average Jewish person. When you have attacks like 7-7 yeah. seven, seven, and Muslims face racism on the streets of London, we can all see that that's completely unacceptable because your regular you know, Muslim woman going about her life doesn't, isn't responsible for what Al-Qaeda or ISIS does. And yet we are seeing the equivalent happen to Jewish people on the streets of Britain yeah. and somehow the outrage isn't matched to that which other groups get. If I could just point out, I totally agree with what you're saying, but the difference is this hatred is coming from anti-racists. Yes. Or self-proclaimed anti-racists. Mm, alleged. Yeah, well, that's it, of course, that they because, see themselves as that mm. way and they're able to do that kind of mental gymnastics. To, to That's the crazy thing. You look at these people's profiles and they're like, they're virtuous and they're good and they're racist and the worst thing ever. Yet the stuff that they've been coming out with in the last 24 hours is insane. And yet if you yeah, talk to... Because they it, believe it, all the tropes, all but, the anti tropes. But also, tropes. If, if, if you said to any of them... Do you, do you think you'll talk to me a little bit about what went on between the Arabs and the and the Israelis in the 1920s and the Balfour Agreement and where the lines were and what the views were and ha how history came to pass and what went on in the Yom Kippur War and what do you think of international settlers in the West Bank? Do you think many of them would be able to answer accurately? Not only could they not answer, not. though, but if you tell them the truth, if you give them the facts... They tell you that you're lying because Jews lie and Jews, uh, you know, Jews always play the victim and you know, every trope comes out. You talk about the anti-racism issue. You know, they talk as though all these Jewish people, all these people rather in Israel are white. When, of course, most people yeah. in mm. Israel Aren't. are not white. Yeah, people mm. of colour. And yet, you know, the kind of binaries that are, that are talked about are completely ignored when it comes to Israelis and to Jewish people. Yes. But also when they, you know, they... They talk about, rightly, they raise some of the things that are happening in the war that are, you know, not appropriate, that are not helping Israel's cause. Uh, and yet you never hear these people talk about the same actions in Syria or in no. Yemen. Well, yeah. Turkey, yes. Yes. Yeah. Turkey yeah. yesterday, you had to bombing the, the Kurdish hospital, yeah. uh, Roy, uh, Royal yeah. Crescent Hospital. Yeah. That, yes, that hasn't been covered anywhere. Yeah. No, certainly yeah. none of those people have, no. have posted about it. But but going back to, to Stephen Fry, I think one of the things that you know, shocked people that they thought, well, he is, he is you know, our national treasure. He's so English. 
And I think that's part mm. of it. He's so English. He's one of us. Mm. But actually, he's Jewish. So he's other. And we're shocked that he's Jewish because we thought he was one of us. Um, and I, think I wonder that's if been... that is part of it, because it feels to me like these attacks coming from the far left, they don't particularly embrace their Englishness. No, sense. no, but I think maybe maybe they do on some level. I okay. think maybe they do. You know, as I'm saying, I don't think the far left and the far right are very different, really, mm. in that respect. Um, and, and I think the other thing it's, this has all shown is that people do not understand what Judaism is about, what Jew, oh, well, Jews are. No, definitely. Not. I mean, you know, a lot of a lot of the criticisms I've seen have said, but he's an atheist. How can he yeah. be Jewish? And it's like Judaism is not just a religion. <laughs> yeah, Judaism is sort of on top of the ethnicity. Yes. I mean, I remember when, after October 7th, I interviewed you for the newspaper I write for, and you told me about how your kids weren't wearing their blazers because it would indicate their Jewishness. How has that changed in the past two months? They're still not wearing their blazers. Yeah, they, they don't wear their blazers or they wear outside jackets now because it's winter and they ma I make sure that they zip them up. And that is the official advice from the school that they go to, to hide the badge, which has a bit of Hebrew writing on it. And how long do we think this is going to continue for? I mean, this this war is not going to be over anytime soon. We, your children could be facing this sort of situation for months and the, months and months. The genie is out of the bottle. It's yeah. not going to go back no, in. Won't. It won't. And, but of course, your kids are innocent in this, mm. you know, whether it is Israel, Gaza, or whether they're Brits facing anti Semitism. How do you explain this to young children? How do you I think that's the hardest thing? I mean, my li the smaller ones who are sort of six, seven, they haven't needed to be exposed to, but the teenagers who are out in the world, I have to warn them to. To, to, to be very conscious of, of who they're around, if they're speaking, who they're speaking to, if people can identify them. Interesting, my eldest want, wanted me to buy him for Hanukkah a uh, uh, Star of David because it had that sort of uh, the opposite effect of making him defiant. But the well, question I'd have I've to done. ask is... I've started wearing one for Well, the I first do. Time. I wear out and about on the tube. Yeah. But then I had a man, uh, actually, he was with his family, he sort of shout at me, free Palestine, in quite an intimidating way. I mean, look, it's not the end of the world, but the point is, you're just like, wait, I'm just sitting here with my Star of David. Yeah. It's not a big deal. Uh, but you have seen others being physically attacked, visible Jews in the street yeah. in certain parts of London mm. being attacked. Uh, and my daughter's eight, and she, go, she goes to school in East London, where she is one of only five non-Muslim um, kids in her class. And she's had to deal with stuff. And we've had, we've, we had to talk to the school and the head teacher, and she's being kind of they're protecting her because, you know, it hasn't got nasty, but there has been some nastiness with parents. So this, this has now become something she's had to learn to deal with. Well, that's it. And, and do, you, do you think that... I'm going to push this a bit further, but... The far left, to me, there is, we have to address that there is some, some of this increase, unfortunately, has come from parts of the Muslim community. And I feel like the far left, frankly, are providing uh, a, a shield for that kind of behaviour, whereas we can just, why, why can't we just address this and be open? And that's how we can start to move forward and hopefully yeah. heal and fix things. If we can't actually call stuff out, that just keeps, sort of puts it under the rug. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I, I, you know, I, as someone who's proudly on the centre left, uh, I would absolutely say that the left has a problem with ignoring the bigotry that comes from parts of the Muslim community. There are lots of things, lots of examples of prejudice, and it cuts different ways. Mm. And one of the reasons I'm on the centre left is because, as a gay person in a minority group, I care about prejudice and have been on the receiving end of it, you know, for most of my conscious life. But there's a problem that the left has, which is that there is this blind spot to the fact that the Muslim community in this country, while being on the receiving end of all sorts of prejudice itself, is clearly has a problem with anti-Semitism that has been very clearly demonstrated about sections of the Muslim community. And it's also far more homophobic than the population mm -hmm. at large. Mm -hmm. We've seen mm -hmm. that with the gay teacher in Batley and Spen. We've seen that with several incidents of LGBT education in Birmingham, where they didn't just say, oh, we don't like it, which is fine. That's a democratic society. You can say that as a parent. They didn't say that. They pull their kids out of school. They have aggressive protests. They have the teachers sacked. We've seen so many examples of this. And I think the left has a problem and Labour MPs have a problem that they ignore it. A Labour MP told me recently that he thinks some of the, some of his colleagues think they're the member for the mosque is the phrase he used because <laughs> they are so intimidated by the community groups, the Muslim community groups. And what's and behind so that? Police. What's behind that? 
Well, I think the sheer number of them means that they can exert a power. There's about yeah. 30 seats in this votes. country where... It's about votes. Exactly, where, they, where they're definitive in, in who gets to be the Member of Parliament. And I think that's dangerous mm. because well, they, yeah. they're entitled to express their opinion and organise. Jewish groups are often very organised as well. But you don't get a right to intimidate. And I think it's crossed a line. Yeah, no, and arguably just before Christmas, we saw a school closing two days early. Yeah. And that was, no, I, I believe in the right to protest, but I also believe in the right mm. to have an education. Mm. And that was wrong. But it feels like if our institutions, which a lot of them are, um, have a left-leaning bent, aren't going to be willing to actually deal with some of the stuff, the issue is going to continue and possibly get worse, which would yeah. be obviously pretty sad.